Today, I'm teaching you how to make pear wine, cider, and mead all in one video. Let's get started. So this video is gonna be a lot of fun. We are using canned pears to make three different brews. We're gonna make a pear cider, pear wine, and pear mead. For each of these brews, you're gonna need a few things. We're first gonna start with the recipes for each. We will then dive into the process and how to make each one. It's important to note that if you use canned pears, you will want to avoid any preservatives like potassium sorbate or metabisulfite. These will fight against your yeast and more than likely keep them from fermenting effectively, if at all. If you decide to use real fresh fruit, I would suggest to cut them up and freeze them. You can also use pectic enzyme to help break down the fruit skins and get more fruit character. These techniques allow you to get more fruit flavor from the pears. Alternatively, you can press the fruit just to get the pear juice. It's up to you to decide what you want to do. Your yeast choice is super important. I would highly suggest to stay away from bread yeast because it's not exactly intended for brewing and will more than likely produce a less than superior product. For these recipes, I would suggest to use a wine yeast like any of the following here. Here's a list of equipment that will help you make this brew. You can find links down in the description for all of these things. You can make this brew without the equipment listed, but you will also have a much more difficult time measuring things and keeping oxygen out of the brew. So now that we have our recipes, let's start by making the cider. We're first going to gather our ingredients and sanitize all of our equipment with a brewing grade sanitizer. After we've completed that, we are going to pour a little bit of our one gallon into a pot with one pound of sugar and heat it up until it's mixed up. We will then take our canned pears and puree them in a blender. While this will lead to a bit of a messy side for a cleanup, it will also allow you to get more flavor out of these canned pears. After you've completed those things, you're gonna mix up the sugar water and pear juice and top it up to one gallon with water. You will wanna leave a little room at the top of the carboy because the fruit will want to rise out. Once the mixture is cooled to about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, you're gonna add 1.5 grams of yeast to it, put your airlock and bung on it and let it start fermenting. You should see some activity in about 24 to 48 hours. The wine will have a very similar process to the cider. We're gonna sanitize our equipment and start heating the water with two pounds of sugar this time. We will then take three pounds of canned pears and puree them with our blender. After that's all done, we mix the pear puree, sugar water, and regular water up to one gallon. Leave room for the fruit to push up during fermentation. Once it cools, add your 1.5 grams of yeast and let it start fermenting. For the mead, we have an almost exactly same process as the wine, but you will use honey instead of sugar. So we sanitize everything we have and we start pureeing our pears. We don't need to heat our honey and water together, although you can if you wanna mix it easier. We add our pureed pears to the carboy with our two pounds of honey, and we then add water and start shaking it like crazy. Once the honey is dissolved in the water, we're gonna add our yeast and put our airlock on. It is recommended for a lot of these things to add some yeast nutrient, so I'll give you your options on screen. It is a good thing to add this yeast nutrient to the mead and the wine because they will probably need some help. Now wait, some of you might be asking, how do I know how alcoholic this will be? Some of you didn't ask that question and just wanna get that booze in your body, but you're gonna learn regardless. In order to calculate the ABV of a brew, we're gonna need some equipment. The easiest way to calculate this is using a hydrometer. A hydrometer is a specific gravity measuring tool that helps us find this information. Using a hydrometer, you're gonna take a small sample of brew and put it into a tall container. Float your hydrometer in the liquid and look at the side. You should see the liquid level floating to a number. The number should be something like 1.052. You will want to write this number down as your starting gravity. It will change after fermentation occurs. Once fermentation is done, you're gonna take another gravity reading and record it. 
Here's an example, 1.052 starting gravity after fermentation 1.000. You can use this calculation to calculate your alcohol by volume. So here's the example brew for us. Now that we know how to calculate ABV, let's catch back up with our brews. So our cider has finished fermenting. We can tell it's finished by looking at the airlock and seeing the activity slow. We can also take a gravity reading with their hydrometer to see where it's at. Most of the time, your yeast will eat every ounce of sugar in the brew. You should see your brew land somewhere around 1.000 gravity. At this point, we wanna make sure the yeast have time to flocculate or collect at the bottom. So we're gonna rack our brew into a new container with that auto siphon and tubing. This will minimize the amount of air that gets into the brew. So we're gonna end up carbonating our cider and possibly even back sweetening. If you're gonna bottle carbonate, you have to follow a few steps. If you want your cider to be sweeter and bottle carbonated, you have to add a non-fermentable sugar like erythritol, xylitol, stevia, any of those, to sweeten to the level that you desire. This sort of sugar is not fermentable by the yeast, so it just stays in there. You will then add some priming sugar, which is what the yeast used to bottle carbonate to the brew. So you're gonna use a calculator I will put one below. Please use a calculator to figure out exactly how much priming sugar to add. You will then bottle the brew into bottles that can hold pressure and store them in a room temp place for a few weeks. I suggest to open a bottle at two weeks, make sure you have refrigerated it first and see how it's carbonating. For forced carbonation, if you want that brew to be sweeter, you can do two things. You can either use the non-fermentable sugar that we talked about, or you can stabilize the brew with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite, or pasteurize it. This will halt any possible fermentation, allowing you to use fermentable sugar. If you stabilize the brew, you can use any fermentable sugar, so that's helpful for this case. Once you back sweeten to the level that you want, you are going to actually take and put it into a keg and force carbonate it. Now, I have a whole video on that. I'll link to it below. So now let's go back to our wine. You should see the yeast flocculate to the bottom and the bubbling stop. You're good to rack at this point, so go ahead and move it to a new container with your auto siphon and tubing. You can then let it set for a little bit longer and it might start clearing up. If you want your brew to be clear, you're going to want to either let it set for a really long time, cold crash it, which means to put it into a cold chamber, or use a wine clarifier like any option you see here. If you want the brew to be sweeter, you're going to need to stabilize with that potassium sorbate and metabisulfite or pasteurize it. Do not add fermentable sugar to this brew while the yeast are still active. It will just start fermenting again. Once you've added the sugar and sweetened it to your liking, make sure the yeast aren't going to activate again by letting it set for a few days, then go ahead and bottle it into any bottle that you can get and cap and cork them. For the mead, you should also see a similar process. The yeast flocculate to the bottom, there's sediment that's collected. Because we used canned pears, there's a lot of leftover sediment that you'll see. You want to rack the brew into a new container and let it set for a while longer. If you want it to be sweeter, you're going to stabilize with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite or pasteurize and then add your sweetener of choice. I would back sweeten this brew specifically with honey to pronounce that flavor. Once you've made sure this brew isn't going to ferment anymore, go ahead and bottle it. Here's some recommendations for this brew. I would take a gravity reading before fermentation starts, after it's done, and after you back sweeten to know what the gravity readings are. When racking, I would use a fine mesh strainer to get any of those pear chunks out of the final product. If you want these brews to be clear, you're gonna need to let them set for a really long time, cold crash, or use any wine clarifier like you see on screen. And to bottle these brews, you're gonna need an auto siphon and bottling wand to move each into bottles. You will then need to cap and cork into those prospective bottles and label them so you don't get them confused with all your other homebrew. You can find links to all of these equipment things below. Now that we've learned how to do all this, Let's go to the tasting. And here we are for the tasting. I'm super excited to share these. Gonna go ahead and spoil. Canned pears are different than fresh pears. We're <gasps> gonna talk about that. So before you commenters go down below and talk about this recipe, we're gonna talk about the good and the bad. Let's go ahead and start with the one that required the least amount of age. We're gonna go ahead and taste the cider first. So it's right here. This one was done pretty quick, bottle carbonated. Let's go ahead and check it out, see if it has carbonated correctly. Always a good sign when there's a because that means that there's CO2 
And I see my carbonation. Let's go and pour it. Oh yeah, we're carbonated. Looking pretty dang good actually. Not the clearest brew, but that is okay. Of course we're back sweetened, we have back sweetened with non-fermentable sugar so that we could safely do this and put our priming sugar in. Um, of course, if you wanna remember, figure out how I made this, go back to the beginning of the video. What does this taste like though? We are not super, I mean, we're between five and 7% ABV. Oh yeah, wow. So the pear flavor, pear character in here feels, um, without spoiling, a little more true than I thought it would um, compared to some of these other ones. It was light, refreshing, and crisp. There's sweetness coming from the erythritol, which is very helpful. Um, that carbonation is just, uh, makes it refreshing, of course. It definitely has a, a solid pear um, side. Now, it's not like super fresh pear. It is kind of like a, I mean, a canned pear, honestly, kind of taste to it. Sometimes, um, if you get a nice ripe pear, it'll have a better freshness side to it. So that is one thing that's helpful here, um, or that I wish I had more of, which if you are making this and you have access to things like citric acid or even malic acid, those two would like pinched just a little bit into this recipe would really brighten it up. It's pretty mellow, but it's pretty good. Actually, I'm, I'm, a, I'm very pleased with this. Um, this pear cider is super crushable. And um, again, we'll talk about the good and the bad here in a second. But for a quick turnaround, that's really not a bad uh, thing at all. Now let's go ahead and open up these others. I should also mention these are bottled. We're at three months since I've made them. You can notice that they're not all clear. This is the wine, not super clear. This is the mead, not super clear. The uh, cider is not really super clear either, but that happens sometimes with bottle carbonation. The wine and mead are pretty young comparatively to where they could be. Most of the time you're gonna age wine or mead a little bit longer. So let's now get over to our wine. So the wine is obviously um, sugar based, regular old table sugar based. I do understand that the pears I used were in 100% um, uh, juice, so they had some sugars from that, of course. I left that juice in because it had some of that pear flavor, and I really wanted that, honestly. Um, that does impact the ultimate taste of these. Here's our wine, you can already see in the bottle. Again, not super clear. So this is setting at roughly about 9% ABV, based off of our gravity readings and all of that. Definitely has a very um, sugary, like uh, table sugary, aroma, not a ton of pear. I mean, a little bit of like pear in there, but it's definitely not bright, as I mentioned before. Here we go. Yeah, okay, sugary, table sugary, kind of sweetness, a little bit of that pear taste coming through, but it's very mellow, honestly. I feel like it's been fermented on pretty heavily. It does still have a little bit of burn, meaning there's like heat from alcohol. Three months, again, is not a long time for a wine, even if it's 9%. Still not a long time. This is very, um, it doesn't have a lot of tannin, which is something that means like it, it clings around in your mouth. If you think about red wine, red wine has a lot of tannin. You drink it and it pulls moisture out and does a lot. This does not have a lot of tannin to it. It's pretty juice-esque. It is enjoyable though. It's just not like the best pear flavor I've ever had or, or want. Honestly, it's got, it's kind of lacking in brightness and that's what I think it really needs. There's not a lot of acidity here to really um, help it out. I did not back sweeten this one. You have the option to back sweeten your wine. If you stabilize it, you can go back and add more um, table sugar and that will bring that the sweetness up. This has enough perceived sweetness to me to be okay. Uh, maybe some more sugar would have helped with that, but I'm also okay with where it's at. So the final gravity for this one was 1.000. We did not back sweeten, and we'll talk about that more. It's not bad. Maybe with some more time, it'll be better. Again, big problem is the quality of pear. And our last one, this is the mead. You can see it's the most hazy of all of them. Most of the time, mead needs lots of time to clear, meaning to, to lose <laughs> this uh, cloudy mess 
and we're only about three months in. This is very young, honestly, for mead. Three months is not a ton of time, so we're gonna have some problems, but let's talk about them. Here it is. Definitely um, more, you know, this wine had sugary aroma from table sugar. This definitely is a floral honey side, part because we fermented with honey in the primary, but also we came back and back sweetened. So this thing was stabilized with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite, and then we added about a quarter pound of honey to be able to bring that sweetness back up and that sugary side that we want. This one's definitely bigger because of the honey. It all, um, kind of pushes out the viscosity, makes it feel bigger. That's just what honey does. It's a thick substance. Um, there is some, the haziness could also be attributed there. A little bit of heat from alcohol. We are setting at about 13% ABV. It is much sweeter though. It's honestly um, eat, not as juicy, juicy air quotes, around as, <laughs> as the wine was. Um, it's, it is pretty good though. It doesn't have a lot of tannin. It does have like that viscosity, but not necessarily good tannin. Doesn't have a lot of bright um, pear uh, acidity that we might want, even though pear is a pretty mellow fruit in my opinion. It's not bad. I think when <laughs> there's some things to fix this recipe, these recipes, the base value of it is like level one. So what we've created here, for, in my opinion, is level one of this pear recipe. And this is using uh, arguably the, the cheapest quality pear, um, canned pear you can find. Obviously you go to nicer places, canned pears might be canned fresh for you, or they could be just nicer quality. This is a little bit lower quality, that's okay, but it's not bad. Let's talk about the, the good side of this specific canned version. Uh, pretty cheap for pears. I would say that you can get a lot of pear flavor, pear uh, in general, for a cheaper amount. There is some sugar from the pear juice, so that raises your gravity if you would like to do, you know, really the wine or the cider side. The mead is gonna need a lot of gravity from the honey. Overall, it's a quick turnaround. That's another pro of this. These really aren't too bad for um, three months old. They do need a little more time, at least for the wine and the mead. Now the cons. Um, canned pears, pureeing, I lost about half of my um, overall gallon of brew for each one to sediment. So I lost quite a bit of this brew. That's just something that comes with all of the stuff that's in the pears. It would have been impossible to rack and move all of that into the new container without really just making the cloudiness even more uh, difficult. There's not a lot of brightness from this pear, and that's just a canned pear problem. Probably not the nicest pears. So you can fix that with adjusting things with some acid balance. Um, lemon juice could maybe help out a little bit with citric acid. That can be fixed, sort of. And the last one is, it, it definitely is appearing as, um, with specifically the lowest quality canned fruit I found, it's appearing as not, not I don't wanna say not natural, not fresh, <laughs> fresh pear. And um, I kinda want a more fresh pear presence. It's fun to say. Overall, you have options. If you're looking at this recipe going, I don't wanna use canned pears, that's fine, don't use canned pears. Go and buy real pears, chop them up, and I'm gonna tell you the secret to making this recipe even better. I didn't use it in this because I used canned pears, but there's a little thing called pectic enzyme. You won't get it on or in your grocery store, but you will get it at a brew shop, Amazon, somewhere like that. Pectic enzyme breaks down fruit skins and gets more juice out of them. Here's what you do. You go and buy, I don't know, three pounds of pears, chop them up, put some uh, pectic enzyme on top and, and let that set for about a day or two. That will help break down the fruit skins, which will uh, release more juice, getting more flavor out of them. If I had done that with fresh pears, I would have an even better product. Overall, as a level one making brewing sort, this is pretty good, but Fresh fruit is the next level to take this up. And of course, I'll put some recipes below if you would like fresh fruit uh, recipes. 
and some ways to fix these things. But I have enjoyed this. I hope you have enjoyed this. And this has been a cider, a wine, and a mead. I mostly make mead, but I'm, I think I've got the wine and cider thing down as well. I have lots of videos on the channel if you would like to dive deeper. And I hope that you will come back for more. If you enjoyed this, leave a like. If you would like to see another canned or uh, fruit option, maybe the next one I'll do is blackberry cider and wine and mead or some other sort. Let me know below. I am super glad that you've been here and I hope to see you again. Cheers. Mm -hmm.